Elon Musk faces off with Gavin Newsom. Venezuela's election is a communist nightmare, which is redundant, I know. And Trump's assassination gets memory hold. Then more on this week's America Uncovered news headlines. Welcome to America Uncovered, I'm Chris Chappell. Apparently, Elon Musk and California Governor Gavin Newsom are at war over Kamala Harris. I am so, so tired of covering the news. Elon Musk posted a parody of a campaign ad on X, featuring an AI version of Kamala Harris's voice. I was selected because I am the ultimate diversity hire. I'm both a woman and a person of color. So if you criticize anything I say, you're both sexist and racist. Although it wasn't all a deep fake. Talking about the significance of the passage of time, right? The significance of the passage of time. So when you think about it, there is great significance to the passage of time, and there is such great significance to the passage of time. That part was real, even if it feels like ChatGPT's server is overheating and causing buffering issues. One person who didn't think this video was funny was California Governor Gavin Newsom, who says, Manipulating a voice in an ad like this one should be illegal. I'll be signing a bill in a matter of weeks to make sure it is. He's gonna make parodies illegal? Oh no, how are we gonna ever get another Weird Al Yankovic album now? But thank goodness this is the issue Newsom is focusing on. I mean, it's not like he has any bigger issues to worry about, like California once again literally being on fire. But to be fair, this is a tricky issue. AI deepfakes are going to make it even harder to tell what is or isn't real, which could be especially damaging when they take on the guise of political leaders. However, this ad was clearly intended to be a joke, and satire and parody are protected under the First Amendment as free speech. Musk also pointed out that he consulted with an expert on the subject, saying, I checked with renowned world authority, Professor Sugan Dees Nuts. I reached out to Professor Dees Nuts for comment, but have yet to hear back. Harris is the presumptive Democratic presidential nominee, a position I remind you she was installed into, not voted into. Because who knows better what the common people want than powerful elites? Harris is gaining endorsements from massive political figures and powerful groups, perhaps none more powerful than white dudes. A series of Zoom calls divided into identity groups like Black Women for Harris and White Women for Harris were set up in an attempt to raise support and money for Kamala Harris. One of these was White Dudes for Harris. This Zoom call featured short speeches from white dudes of note, such as Lance Bass, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, and the dude himself, Big Lebowski actor Jeff Bridges. I'm white, I'm a dude, and I'm for Harris. Yeah, well, that's just like your opinion, man. Although I can't help but wonder how a racially segregated Zoom meeting called White Dudes for Trump would be received by the media. I reached out to satire expert Professor Dees Nuts for comment, but have yet to hear back. If you know how I can get in touch with Dees Nuts, please let me know in the comments below. And after the break, revolution in Venezuela. Welcome back. Venezuela held a presidential election that could end the United Socialist Party of Venezuela's 25 years of single-party rule. In fact, there's been a lot of leadership shakeups around the world. Hamas leader Ismail Haniyeh was killed while in Iran by a hidden bomb. Not long ago, Iran lost its leader in a helicopter crash. Our condolences to the bomb and the helicopter. But back to Venezuela. Based on exit polls, it looks like that one-party rule would end and President Nicolas Maduro would be voted out of office in a landslide. Democracy would rule. Until Venezuela's electoral authority, which is under Maduro's control, announced he won with 51% of the vote. Like a break room after a heartless coworker uses the microwave, something smells fishy here. As soon as Maduro was announced the victor, fireworks were set off. TV stations only showed people celebrating in the streets, and a drone show lit up the sky. I guess it's nice to see a dictator using drones to celebrate instead of murdering civilians. Wow, it's almost like Maduro expected to win no matter what the vote was, as if the election wouldn't be free and fair. Some people were actually happy about Maduro's victory, like the Democratic Socialists of America who congratulated Maduro on X, saying his win proves he has the support of the people. Then they promptly deleted the tweet when people pointed out, you know, everything. 
Venezuelan opposition leader Marina Corina Machado said their party has 73.2% of vote tallies, and they show Maduro's presidential rival, Edmundo Gonzalez, won decisively. Oh, snap, she has the receipts. Unfortunately, Maduro has the military. Which wins in the game of rock, paper, tanks? Thousands took to the street and protested this apparently rigged election. Now you might be thinking, wait, this is America uncovered. What does a Venezuelan election have to do with the US? I mean, America has never seen protests break out after accusations of election fraud. And we'll definitely not see that after this election because our country isn't crazy divided. This story concerns America because the US is now calling on Venezuela to release specific data on the election, even though the US Department of State has already recognized Gonzales as the winner. It also concerns America because President Biden recently lifted heavy sanctions on Venezuela after Maduro promised to hold a free and fair election. Wow, you can't trust authoritarians? I'm shocked. You know, I think Biden deserves a pass on that blunder. I mean, who could have seen that coming? I reached out to Professor D's nuts for comment, but have yet to hear back. What's happening in Venezuela is scary, election fraud. The justice system being weaponized against a popular opposition candidate. I'm glad that sort of thing doesn't happen here in the US of A. Now, for no reason at all, after that segue, let's talk about Donald Trump. Donald Trump conducted a victim interview with the FBI over his assassination attempt. It's nice of the FBI to interview him instead of just spying on him like they did with his campaign. Acting Secret Service Director Ronald Rowe testified before two Senate committees and said he couldn't defend why the roof the gunman used wasn't secured. Man, the Secret Service is so bad they can't even defend themselves. But it'd be hard to, especially given that a report shows police first noticed the gunman 90 minutes before shots were fired. 90 minutes? You could order some Amazon packages and get them delivered quicker than the Secret Service acted. Actually, you can get every Amazon package delivered quicker than they acted, since they didn't act on the information at all. Speaking of Trump, while appearing for the National Association of Black Journalists, he suggested Kamala Harris misled voters about her race. She was always of Indian heritage, and she was only promoting Indian heritage. I didn't know she was black until a number of years ago when she happened to turn black, and now she wants to be known as black. So I don't know, is she Indian or is she black? She is always but identified you know as a black woman. I respect she went to a historically black college. I respect either one, but she obviously doesn't. The Associated Press said Trump falsely accused her of misleading voters about her race. Even though, as ex-users pointed out, the Associated Press themselves referred to her as Indian American when she became a senator. On the bright side, this isn't as nearly as confusing as Canada, where the opposite happened. Justin Trudeau suddenly became Indian and black. But at least there's one thing we can all agree on. The Trump assassination attempt actually happened. At least that's what I would be saying if it weren't for the fact that Meta's AI tool said the Trump assassination attempt never happened. The New York Post asked the bot if the event was fictional and it replied, there was no real assassination attempt on Donald Trump. I strive to provide accurate and reliable information, but sometimes mistakes can occur to confirm there has been no credible report or evidence of a successful or attempted assassination of Donald Trump. To be fair to the AI, the shooting does feel like a scene you'd see in a fictional movie. Trump narrowly avoids a bullet flying through his skull by moving his head at the last second, then responds with an iconic pumping of his fist in front of the American flag. Dude went from the dawn to the rock. Of course, you may not have seen this photo since Meta Platform Facebook admitted they censored the image. A fact check appeared above the photo saying it's been altered and could mislead people. Meta says this was a mistake, and the fact check applied to an altered version of this image showing Secret Service agents smiling, and it somehow applied it to every version of it. So these are just some innocent mistakes. I mean, what reason would Meta CEO Mark Zuckerberg have for not liking Donald Trump? Of course, this is just conjecture on my part, but given every facet of the Trump assassination attempt story, it's like they're trying to have people make conspiracy theories. Like how a lot of left-leaning people are spreading the theory that Trump wasn't shot at all, and how Google was making it very hard to search for it. Yes, we're all very concerned about President Truman. Enjoy the video. Here's another video YouTube thinks you'll like, because the algorithm is great. I'm not saying that under duress at all. 
and American coverage wouldn't exist without your support. Click that orange button to support us on Patreon. All it takes is a dollar an episode, and you can set a monthly limit. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.